As we continue our, uh, our vast coverage here on NBC Sports, Lee Diffie, along with two of America and the world's greatest on two wheels. That is Ricky Carmichael and Ben Bostrom. Hi, guys. Hope you're both keeping well. Hope your families are both well. RC, I want to start with you first. Um, the Monster Energy AMA Supercross uh, season, of course, like every other racing season, has been put on hold and it will run later in the year after the motocross season has finished. But it got off quite, it got off to an amazing start. Well, actually, a, a very good portion of the season, uh, actually. What was the highlight for you, uh, whether it be 250s or 450s? What really got your attention this year so far? Well, let's start with the 250. And I think the biggest thing, Lee, is uh, Jet Lawrence. I mean, what an incredible race that was at the second time that we went to Anaheim. Just really getting to see his raw talent. There had been so much hype built up around it. So uh, that was a lot of fun for me. We were waiting for that to happen. Just a, an incredible ride. Shame that it ended the way it did, but it was definitely something something fun uh, and exciting to watch. I think Supercross, especially the 250 classes, uh, and for a... Uh, a fun future. And then switching over to the 450s, Lee, uh, I, I really anticipated the reigning champion, Cooper Webb, to uh, start out a little bit better than what he did. Uh, the guy knows how to win championships, and he really got behind the eight ball uh, there early, and it took him a while to get things sorted out. But uh, Ken Roxon really had the start that he, uh, this year that he had in 2019. Nothing new there. Great to see him get the win that you and I were a part of. Uh, at St. Louis, the second race. And, um, you know, a lot of people give Eli Tomac a hard time that sometimes he does the Eli deal where he'll just get seventh or eighth. And honestly, I think he's uh, faced his uh, demons and uh, that old Eli Tomac is gone. So uh, those are kind of the surprises. You know, the Cooper Webb starting out slow, Jet Lawrence uh, coming in and just showing us just how much talent he has. Uh, it's been a it's been a fantastic year. It surely has, and a lot to look forward to, particularly uh, in the 450s, with still seven more races to go once the championship resumes. Ben, for you, uh, let's talk MotoGP. Actually, we'll get to MotoGP in a moment. Let's talk Moto2 because that's the broadcast you and I actually did get to cover uh, before the coronavirus pandemic uh, took hold, and we all hit pause. Global sport hit pause, and American Joe Roberts on the pole position for the first time in his career. And in all due respect to this young Californian, he was nowhere and then just shot to prominence and almost got a podium in that race in Qatar. How good was that ride? How good was that weekend for, for this uh, promising young American? I think it was fantastic for the sport. Also, obviously for Joe, because when you get that little, just that little sniff of the front, you actually feel like you belong there. And from then on, you'll be at the front. It's strange. It's, it's something you overcome in racing. And Ricky knows it. I mean, it's, when you get your first win, all of a sudden they, the wins just start coming. You know, and everybody's like, that, was that harder? No, it's actually easier. It's harder when you're in the back and you're kind of tense and you, you work a lot harder, let's say. And for Joe, I don't know, he's got that, uh, he's got kind of good personality. He's got a really good coach around him there with Hopper. And I think this, we're going to see a lot of good things out of that kid. I think it's just great for fantastic and for the racing as well, so. It's kind of a shame. Obviously, there is a lot bigger things at play here. Everybody's health and well-being, first and foremost. But it's kind of a shame, isn't it, that we're in this situation because I think this guy needed that momentum and needed to keep it going. He's got a taste of it now. Now he wants more. Yeah, that's a good point. It does happen a lot. You see people take a break and they come back either stronger or it's almost like they forgot. You know, as you get older as a veteran, you can actually just flip a switch. Kind of like an actor, right? You, you're this guy over here, and then they're like, okay, you got to go play Batman. He just flips a switch. And as you get older, you learn that switch. The deal, you think with like a road race guy, it's strange. When you have someone like in Carmichael, you know, like you could go out there on your practice track. You have one in your backyard. You got, you got three practice bikes. You go play every day, and you show up, and it's not that different. You jump on a road race bike. You, well, you get to test every month or so, but in this case, you can't even test. These guys are going to have a long duration off. In a case like Joe, where he's carrying all the momentum, and then it's gone. Where'd yeah. he go? At least he's got <laughs> the biggest thing I could say. It would be worse to finish in the back and have to sit there for months going, what could I have done better? In this case, he kind of finished on a high thinking, I only need to improve this much. Mm -hmm. And so he, he's, he's in a pretty good place. I'm pretty envious. And Ricky, speaking of, you know, Ben mentioned taking a break. 
how about when we think holistically about uh, 250 East, 250 West and 450, the premier class, those riders in particular who have suffered injuries, some like Marvin Muscan, who didn't even get to start this year's championship, they have almost got like a second off season, haven't they, to recover, to recuperate, to train, be 100% healthy and launch back into what is left of this season. It's kind of like a second take, isn't it? Yeah, it surely is. The biggest thing that, that I am most excited to see is when we get back going to Monster Energy Supercross and you think Eli Tomac and Ken Roxon, I mean, they're in the thick of it. Ben, you know this. I mean, it, it's crunch time for them. It's, it's do or die. And, you know, when you think about it, like, they're like, I've got to win. I got to be here every single weekend. I got to be on the box. I can't give up any points. So now to just do a pause, you're wondering, like, what does that do from a championship standpoint? And now when we get back into it, how do you put yourself mentally back into that position? And I believe one of those two guys who, who are able to do that the best is going to be the guy who has the advantages. But one blessing I think that this pause has is for a guy like Cooper Webb. Uh, he was coming on strong before he hurt himself in Arlington. And when you, I mean, I, I personally think he was going to be right up there to win. And that would have been played, that would have played mind games with the guys that he's going with Eli Tomac and Ken Roxon. So now he's got a chance to heal up maybe fix the bike. Maybe there was an underlying problem at the beginning of the season that we didn't know about. I know he was struggling in the whoops and fix that, but he still wasn't the guy that we knew he was, but he was starting to catch fire. So now he's going to come in healthy and his teammate, Marvin Muscan, like you talked about Lee, Hey, you know, KTM is going to put that in there. He needs another, they need another guy to help Cooper out. It's going to be a long shot, but it's still possible. Quite a list, isn't it? And you help me if, if, if I miss any, but you got Muscan and, you know, Cooper, Cooper Webb can deal with that uh, rest. The Lawrence brothers, both Hunter and Jet. Who else have we got? Justin Brayton. Brayton, um, Brock Tickle uh, is in there. Uh, Adam Cianciarillo. Adam Cianciarillo. I mean, those are all guys that can get in the mix and get, you know, Cooper starts winning races. Those guys get in between. It's going to be interesting. So, Ben, with that being said, uh, it was no secret in MotoGP that uh, Mark Marquez and the HRC Repsol Honda team weren't that great in testing. His younger brother, Alex, was struggling. Has this break come at a good time, not even starting? Has that given them an extended period to get it together? Not that they're going out testing, not that anybody's testing, but is this kind of, is this somewhat of a reprieve? Well, I, I, if I'm the guy sitting on the couch, and I am, I actually wanted to see him struggle a little bit. He's the guy to beat. You know, it's tough for his brother because you want to come out and have a fantastic bike and build his confidence up, you know, get a little bit of the Joe Roberts thing going. They're going back to the drawing board. They're going to fix a few things. It's better for Alex, better for Marquez, worse for the sport. You want to see the best guy towards the back. I used to love seeing Ricky get bad starts. Like that, it kind of makes the race, you know? To watch but, him come through, yeah. Yeah, it kind of makes the race. It is what it is. And a lot of the guys, you know, they're sitting there. And for the road racer, like we said before, you were literally sitting on that couch, you know. And they, I know they ran a virtual game and stuff like that. And we're terrible at that. We shouldn't even be doing it because it's a bit hard on our eyes. You know, we shouldn't be staring at the computer. we got to be looking 100 feet ahead. So I say for those guys, the veterans have it the best. They could flip a switch. Fortunately, the young guys got, a, um, you know, some, some huevos down there. So they just go out there and throw it out. But – I think it's a, for the sport, for the fans, it's, it's a bit tough. And I mean, financially, as well as, uh, you know, when you sit around, you find other things to do, you know, like you don't have what your normal Saturday night would be. It'd be like, okay, I'm going to watch the Supercross. Great. Sunday's a MotoGP, you know, and it could be NASCAR and it could be this and this and this. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's not on. I got to go, uh, I gotta go for a hike. I got to get out. The benefit is the family time. And you learn what to be grateful for, right? Wow, I, I always thought I, I just, you know, MotoGP is always on. Supercross is always on. Well, it's not. Yeah. Those things are there. Like even going to a restaurant, right? Wow, I'm kind of grateful this restaurant's open. I always took it as like a privilege, right? Now, you realize when those guys go back out there and, you know, put their neck on the line, you might just appreciate it a little bit more. Just the fact that you actually get to sit there and watch something that, you know, you dream to do. Okay, we're running out of time, so really quickly, rapid fire. Ben Bostrom, you, for you. This guy behind me, the doctor, Valentino Rossi. Does this give him an extension of his career? This was more than likely going to be his final year. Does this now fold over into 2021? Yes or no? Man, I sure hope so. 
we need that guy on the track. And I know it's, it's another age. It's another year, right? He's, you know, it's 41, it could be 42 pretty soon. But, you know, you see these guys and they, they pull together. He's amazing. And yes, it's, you know, the clock is ticking and yes, it is another year, but he's still Valentino Rossi. All right, Ricky Carmichael for you. The big question, is this the year when Monster Energy AMA Supercross gets going again? Is this the year that Eli Tomac or Ken Roxon wins the Supercross title? Oh, well, 100%. You, that is an easier question for me, I think. <laughs> he, he laid it up there for me. Yeah, without a doubt, he, uh, one of those two guys are going to be crowned the champion. It's going to be very exciting. Regardless if it's Eli Tomac or Ken Roxon, it's a fantastic story coming from both of them. Probably Ken's story is a little more intriguing to everyone if you think about what happened a couple years ago and what he's been through. Nevertheless, I can't watch the, one of these guys be crowned champion. Well, thanks for making a little bit of time for us, guys. And uh, to both of you, take care of the family, look after the kids and your partners, and, uh, and we'll all stay healthy and well, and we'll be back at the track before we know it. Hey, motorsports fans, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe before you go for all the latest news and highlights across motorsports.